One of Canada's most notorious serial killers has been sentenced to life behind bars with no chance of parole for 25 years. Elizabeth Wetlofer offered a short apology in court today to family members of her victims. The former nurse pleaded guilty last month to eight counts of first-degree murder, four counts of attempted murder, and two of aggravated assault. In each case, Wetlofer confessed to injecting insulin into her elderly patients. Her apology fell flat for many of those who lost loved ones. She said she was sorry, but sorry's too late. It's already done. And there's no tacking back what she did. And I don't think she's really sorry. I think she was trying to get the sympathy of the court. In my opinion, it was just utter fog. It was crap. It was, she's trying to make amends for something that you can't make amends for, something that you calculated, something that you did. You can't just say, sorry doesn't cut it. Sorry doesn't cover it up for me. I feel now that my, my nightmare is over. My dad is... My dad is smiling down on us right now, saying thank you. The judge could have the option of sentencing Wetlawfer to life behind bars with no chance of parole for 75 years. Instead, he opted for 25 years, saying Wetlawfer's confession spared victims' families from a full trial. The judge did add that it's unlikely the formal nurse will ever be paroled. The crimes took place in three long-term care homes and one private home in southwestern Ontario between 2007 and 2014. The provincial government has announced a full inquiry into this specific case. As we told you earlier in the show, Elizabeth Wetlawfer has been sentenced to life behind bars with no chance of parole for 25 years. The former nurse pleaded guilty earlier this month to eight counts of first-degree murder, four of attempted murder, and two of aggravated assault. Family members of her victims are calling for a full overhaul of her long-term care system. We'll never get over the fact that our trust was irrevocably destroyed by this woman because we'll question everything when it comes to long-term care. Things need to change and they need to change now. We don't need an inquiry, we need legislation to protect our elders. I'm going to push as hard as I can for changes in the system, whether I have to go to Ottawa or wherever I have to go to talk to the politicians and say, these people matter. These are people who built this country, they protected this country, they defended this country, and on the birthday of this country, I think they should be treated a lot better than they are. Now, dozens of lives have been personally touched by Canada's most notorious female serial killer, Elizabeth Wetlofer. And while she's unlikely to leave prison alive, she has left her mark. There are major concerns that her crimes went unnoticed and unreported, and advocates say it's time for the province to step up when it comes to elderly care, with one elder care advocate saying all of this starts with the coroner. They need to be asking more questions because they are reliant on a form that comes across a computer. So they need to be asking more questions. I think they need to be doing spot checking. They need to be going in and perhaps doing autopsies on a certain number of people because these people are very vulnerable and they can't speak up for themselves. And sometimes even just a view of the body um, or a view of the records may show something. But if nobody's looking, if they're relying on the home to tell them, hey, we made a mistake or something went wrong, I don't think those things are generally being reported. Jane Metis is a legal advocate for the elderly. She says Ontario's inspection system for long-term care homes needs a complete overhaul. We really need them to have an, also have an investigative function. And we also need them to enforce the regulations. So, for example, failure to report elder abuse. Very common. It happened in this case. We need some teeth to that. They've never laid a charge of a failure to um, report, even though uh, when it's the home or the staff that are failing to do that, that is an offense under the legislation. We've never seen that done. But financial penalties for long-term care homes that continuously miss the mark are coming. In a statement to City News, Ministry spokesperson David Jensen writes, The ministry intends to strengthen its quality and safety inspection program with new enforcement tools, including financial penalties, to ensure that all home licensees are addressing concerns promptly. 
He adds that the ministry is also proposing to establish new offences that would provide additional protections for residents. Other tools being proposed would allow the minister and director to suspend a licensee's license and order interim management and for the ministry to provide sp specific direction to LTC homes to support improvements in care. Midas believes these are positive steps forward, but that greater leaps must be taken to protect our most vulnerable, including putting cameras in long-term care homes. Now, the College of Nurses has come under fire for its inaction. The governing body knew that Wetlawfer had been fired from several posts, but apparently didn't conduct a thorough investigation. Now, Wetlawfer is expected to appear at a college disciplinary hearing next month. One of the nursing homes where Wetlawfer committed some of her crimes, Caresant Care in Woodstock, it still is not allowed to accept new residents.